Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our Thursday evening broadcast of Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Mike Pickett, and I'm blessed to be your host this evening. I'll tell you, I'm really excited about the word that's going to be coming forward tonight. And we truly do appreciate you joining in this evening from wherever you might be all over the world, whether it's morning, evening or afternoon in your world. Thank you so much for taking the time to sow into yourself, allow the word of God to penetrate your heart and bring transformation. I'll tell you, it's the word of God that makes all the difference in our lives. So we do truly do appreciate the fact that you're taking this opportunity to allow the word to transform your mind and really clear a pathway forward for all the amazing things that God has in store for you. Uh, before we jump into the Word, we just want to remind you, for those of you who might be new to these live Bible studies, about some basic ground rules that we'd like to lay as we participate uh, with you this evening. This is a live Bible study, so our goal and our objective is to, is to uh, have you participate with us. So whatever form that you might be watching on, as, as questions arise through, throughout the evening as we're going through the Word, please just go ahead and go down to that chat section, whether it's on YouTube, on Facebook, or even on gospeltruth.tv. Go down to that chat section and enter those questions. What we'll do is uh, we'll, we'll leave about 10 to 15 minutes towards the end of our time in the Word where we're going to get to as many questions as possible. So we truly do encourage you to please participate with us as we go through our time in the Word. This is not just a one-sided uh, monologue, but we want this to be a dialogue. So please join in with us. It's, it's going to be a blessing. Also, uh, as you're going through this, uh, these Bible studies and as you're listening to us, if you decide that you want to reach out to us, please feel free to give us to contact us. Our phone number is 719-635-1111. That's 719-635-1111. We have prayer ministers standing by even right now that are ready to take your calls, ready to pray with you, and ready to, to direct you to other materials that might help you with whatever you might be going through. You know, those prayer ministers are, are blessed and they're anointed, and they are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's a great opportunity, no matter where you are in the world, where you can reach out to us and connect with us. And I'll tell you, the Bible is very clear that when two of us come together, there are Jesus is in the midst of us. We encourage you to please reach out to us. Um, they can, uh, as you reach out to us, what our ministers will do as well is if there's a particular topic that you're interested in, they'll be able to, to direct you to that topic on our website, which is www.awmi.net. I'll say we have over 200,000 hours of free teaching that's available for you to either listen to, to, to right there on, online or to download to your devices. You can take it with you wherever you go and, and always stay in the Word. And so whatever you might be going through, I believe that the, that topic will be there waiting for you. And, and praise God for the word of, word of God, which is always available and always um, quickens our hearts and, and encourages us and empowers us to overcome anything the enemy might be throwing at us. So we really do encourage you to please go to our website as well. And while you're there, if you're prompted, uh, we encourage you that there's, there's a give button there on the top, or if you go to www.awmi.net backslash give, we encourage you to, to, to partner with this ministry. You know, these live streams go out over the internet all over the world, and we're seeing lives transformed. Even, even um, the, the ministry here, AWMI and Karis Bible College, we're in 20 different nations impacting so many lives. And so we encourage you that if you are interested, it's a great way to, to allow your funds to go further all over the world in transforming lives. And finally, before we jump into the Word, just would just like to remind you that these, li these Bible studies are live, and they are daily, Monday through Friday. So on Mondays and Fridays, they're at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, they're at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, just like this evening. And also on, on Wednesday mornings, they're at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. So we encourage you to plan your calendars, set your alarms, whatever, whatever it takes, so that you don't miss any of these. We always have some amazing teachers and a great time in the Word. So we encourage you to please join us every single day. Well, today we're really excited to have with us Pastor Greg Moore. <laughs> Pastor Greg is a, uh, he is uh, one of our favorite teachers here at Karis Bible College, and he's been with us for, uh, gosh, over a decade now. Yeah, it? 11 years. 11 years now, and he and his wife, Gina, are a blessing. I'll tell you, they have so much experience in the Word of God, in pastor, pastoring, in teaching, and going all over the world and seeing lives transformed. So I know we're all going to be blessed today. So Pastor Greg, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks, Mike. It's just a, just a privilege and an honor to be part of what, in the middle of what God's doing, and you know, Andrew uh, has shared with us uh, that uh, almost a year ago, the Lord spoke to him that uh, we are in the midst of a third, third great awakening. Amen. And 
you know, he's the first one that I'd heard that speak that, and then and then I'm seeing all these uh, uh, ministers uh, all over the world picking up on that <laughs> that we're in the third third great great awakening. So we're we're in the midst of a uh, major move of God. Um, uh, things are happening. You know, we we see that sin is abounding and problems are happening in the world, but grace does much more abound. And so it's great. Uh, one, one of the ways to, to stay in tune to what God is doing in the earth today is, is through uh, your relationship with God and Amen. in the Word. And so I just want to commend each of you who have, are taking these times to uh, these uh, live Bible studies to, to grow in the Word and, and, to, and to hear what God's doing. And then I believe God's uh, this year is going to be a year that God's going to be speaking to you. Uh, he's got a word for you. He's got, uh, he's got revelation for you. In fact, he's hidden some things for you, not from you. Amen. And if you'll spend time in the word and, and, uh, and take these Bible studies and just meditate upon these things, I believe God's going to expand your revelation this year. Well, uh, I've got a, a word uh, that I want to share with you today. I'm going to begin in John 14. But just before I do, I want to tell you a funny. This is called uh, Four Husbands. So the local news station was interviewing an 80-year-old lady because she had just gotten married for the fourth time. And the interviewer was asking her questions about her life and what it felt like to be marrying again at 80 years old and then about her new husband's occupation. Well, she said he's a funeral director. And that's interesting, the newsman thought. And then he asked her if she wouldn't mind telling him some things about her first three husbands and what they did for a living. So she paused for a few moments, needing to, time to reflect on all of those uh, years. And after a short time, a smile came to her face and she answered proudly, explaining that she'd first married a banker when she was in her early 20s, then a circus uh, ringmaster when she was in her 40s, later on a preacher when she was in her 60s, and now in her 80s, a funeral director. And her interviewer looked at her quite astonished and, and asked why she had married four men with, with such diverse careers. And she smiled and explained, well, I married one for the money, two for the show, Three to get ready and four to go. <laughs> that is funny. I don't care who you are. That That's funny. a good one. <laughs> a merry heart does good like a medicine. You know, uh, people, uh, I've had people actually, uh, you know, condemn me for, share, for sharing, um, you know, these jokes. But uh, the first time I... I I actually didn't intend to do this. This was something I stumbled upon when I was pastoring. Uh, I was getting my master's degree, and Peter Wagner was one of our instructors, and he was and he was uh, uh, sharing, and he, he got up and shared a funny. And so I I shared that joke the next Sunday morning, and and two of our uh, me members who were uh, had husbands, and they were. Uh, independent of one another they both of their husbands showed up that morning and i shared that joke and and then and then they they both told their wives that guy's funny i'm coming back and i said well man if that'll if that'll uh put a hook the bait uh put a hook in there and, and it'll be the be the bait I'll, I'll i'll let that happen so and people just started sending me jokes so anyway it's kind of it's it's kind of something that whatever it takes to yeah what it, yeah yeah but i mean you know we want it it's like anesthetic it's yeah you know it actually does amen. it just it just opens people up amen for the word mike so absolutely so uh, we you know we need to um we, we need to chill out guys you you need to take a chill pill and not take yourself so seriously. Uh, take God seriously, but but uh, too many times we're, we get we allow ourselves to get so wrought up with all kinds of uh, problems and things in our in our minds, and and it just helps to laugh. So uh, I wanted to talk to you tonight. Well, in fact, let, let's just look at the verse I want to 
read uh, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let, it be, neither let it be afraid. And so Jesus here in, in this passage told us that, that he's given us a, a gift of his peace. Amen. Now, in our nature, when we're born again, we're just like Jesus. And, and peace is one of the fruit of the Spirit. We, ha we have that peace. You've, you've got that peace on the inside of you. But, uh, you know, in the world, and we are in the world, we're not of the world, but we're in the world, uh, there's problems, there's difficulties, there's challenges, there are, you know, situations that come up that, that are beyond our control. And so many times, we, what, what happens is, is we allow circumstances around us to get in us. That's right. The disciples, when Jesus told them to get into the boat and go to the other side, you know, it took faith for them to get in the boat because they were professional fishermen. Yeah. And um, they got in the boat. They knew as professional fishermen, they knew the signs of the weather and they knew knew that there was an impending storm, but they didn't know how great that storm was. That storm uh, got in their boat and, and the waves got in their boat. And what happened, the disciples let the storm, they started off in faith, but they let the storm get into them. And then they went to Jesus and he was freaked out, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no, Jesus wasn't freaked out by the storm. In fact, Jesus wasn't ever freaked out about anything. That's right. And, and, uh, and Jesus, from a, in fact, he was asleep. And Jesus, from a place of peace, spoke peace to the storm. And uh, he, he allowed the peace that was within him uh, emanate from him, and, and that impacted the circumstances around him. And my brother and sister, let me tell you something. The power that you have within you is greater than what's going on around you. Amen. If we'll just recognize it and acknowledge it and, and, and walk in it. And what, I'm, what I want to share with you tonight is how you can rule over your enemies with God's peace. Mm. How you can, you can literally rule over adversaries, circumstances, the devil, uh, anything that, any, that, that the enemy can throw at you with God's peace. Amen. Um, the definition of peace means to join. It's, it means prosperity. It means to be at one or quietness or rest. It, it means to set at one again. And that involves you and I coming into agreement with God manifesting himself in the place that you are right now presently. You know, the loss of peace is a result of failing to come into agreement that God's awesome in the place that you are right now. So many of us have, a, you know, we've got goals at the beginning, you know, in, at the beginning of each year, people usually set goals. And, you know, some of the goals are God-given goals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you turn 40, like you and me, Mike, right? Sure. You, <laughs> <laughs> I like that number. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you fight the battle of the bulge <laughs> sometimes, okay? And so you can have a God, you could have a God-given goal mm -hmm. to, to, to take care of your body, lose weight, mm -hmm. what, whatever, to, or to be at a, uh, in, a healthy, in a healthy way. And I know people have, have, have these God-given goals, yeah. thing God puts in their heart, mm -hmm. this, these goals, but it's like, it's like, okay, even though God gives you the goal and, and that's where you're headed toward, it's like, you, you are right here, okay? And, and what happens many times is, is they, people receive a goal or a vision or a direction from God, and it's, it's over there, and you're right here. And what happens is many times we end up, uh, de people despise where they are right now because of where they want to, where, where they want to go. And God doesn't agree with you about that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't right. agree with you. For example, there are, I know women who have come to us and, uh, and they have marriage problems and, and basically they're withholding their bodies from their husbands because they despise their body right now where it is. Well, if you're married, 
ma'am, your body is the only body your husband has a right to look at. So right. don't make him hungry. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and it is not the will of God for you to despise where you are while you're on the way to where you're going. In fact, Amen. God's not going to help you get there. He's not going to help you get to even a, even a goal that he gave you. He's not going to help you get there if you despise where you are. Here, here's what I want you to, first of all, understand about God's peace. God is awesome in the place you are right now. Amen. And he'll never be more awesome when you, get to, when you accomplish your goal. Because when you get there, you're going to have challenges there. You're going to have people there. You're going to have problems there. Okay? But you've got, we've got, look, to be at peace, you've got to agree that God's awesome Amen. right where you are. Mm -hmm. he, he, and, and, you know, we have challenges. I mean, we have a wonderful ministry here, mm -hmm. Mike, working with Andrew, Andrew's ministry. But you have, you have challenges. Every day. You have opportunities. That's right. And... You, you could, we could allow that, that to uh, get inside us and get, right. get us, make us upset. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, is we, we have to agree with God. You know, God, you're, you live in me. Amen. And so this challenge, you've called us to this ministry, so you're going you're gonna to provide the answer. You're going to show right. us what to do. And right. God in me is greater than the problems going on around me. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Proverbs 3, chapter 5, or... Proverbs chapter three, verses uh, three through five talks about trusting in the Lord with yeah. all your heart and leaning not on your own understanding. And that yeah. really is that pathway to it peace. It is. Where it's not about you, how you think, but it's about just simply letting your trust be in the Lord. Amen. And you trust him regardless of what's going on around, right. uh, around you. The world's idea of peace is the temporary absence of problems. <laughs> that's good. Uh, th th that's look, good. If, if that's your... If that's your definition of peace, you're talking about heaven, man. Because <laughs> it's not going to you're not going to be in a place on earth where you where you don't have problems. God's idea of peace is the presence of God. It's just that he's present in you and the God that's in you, the presence of God in you. You know, let's just use COVID as an example. The presence of God in you is greater than COVID that's trying to, that's all around you. Amen. And man, I mean, if you understand how powerful his presence is in you Amen. and, and, and that what, the, whatever the enemy can throw our way, uh, it, 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 it cannot listen. What the enemy uh, can throw our way is not greater than what God has done on the inside of us. Amen. Praise God. And so God intends for us to find peace in the midst of difficult situations, in the midst of storms. And, you know, that requires us to just, as you just mentioned, Mike, just Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Right. Look, I'm trusting in you, Lord. My trust is in you, not in, my, not in my mind, not in my circumstances, not in my own ability. My trust is in you. Without the peace of God, my brother and sister, you will respond to life in fear. Let me say that again. Without the peace of God, you will, you will be responding to life in fear. If you're, if, if I'm talking to some mother right now. You're, you're concerned about your child. And you, maybe you've got a negative report from a teacher. Or maybe they're uh, acting up or in, re in rebellion. Listen, don't agree with the temporary condition of your, of your child and, what, and what's going on. Agree with the word. And speak the word over them from a place of peace. Just declare that my son, Isaiah 54, 13, my son and da our daughter is taught of the Lord and great is their peace. Amen. Psalm 127, 5 uh, says that, that my children will, will speak with their enemies in the gate. And that means, that means the enemy is going to rue the day he ever came Amen. against my son and daughter. That's right. Proverbs 6, 22 says that the word, when my son or daughter is roaming, the word's going to be leading them. When my son or daughter is sleeping, the word's keeping them. When my son or daughter is awake, the word of God's speaking to them. Listen, the word of God, guys, is greater than whatever's going on. You need, and, and that will bring peace to you. That will bring peace into your life. Um, Philippians 4, verse 6 let me let me turn there and 
it says, um, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And let me stop right there. If, if you haven't, if you're, if you're not in a place um, uh, where in your prayer life that you're, that you're thanking God, you haven't yet, you're not in a place where you're going to draw on God's peace. You're not at peace yet. He's, he, he said, the, uh, the, be anxious for nothing, but by everything by prayer and thanksgiving um, make and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Worry is our feeble attempt to be omnipotent mm. and to change our future that we're afraid of. It's, the, it's our feeble attempt to be omnipotent. Now, you know, I've worried before. Uh, how many of you have <laughs> worried, okay? Uh, but here's the thing I know. Worry never helps any, anyone or anything. Amen. So why do we want to do that? Amen. I, instead, we need to get into the presence Amen. of God and into prayer and start thanking Him for who He is thanking Him for what He's done in, in your present circumstance and come into agreement. God, you're awesome in this place, in the, in the middle of all that I'm going through. You, you're awesome. And then what happens is the peace of God, it kicks into gear and it, it surpasses His peace, totally surpasses our understanding. It's, it's powerful. That You know, the out, if you've ever talked with anyone or listened to anyone who's testified that they visited heaven or they had a vision of heaven. Did you know that the outstanding character trait of heaven is peace? Amen. Total absence of strife, total absence of problems. And, and, and you read Romans 14, Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so, Peace, get my brother and sister, is the, is an attribute. That's that's an attribute of heaven. It's an, it's an attribute of the kingdom of God. And seventeen times in the New Testament, man, I can give you I can give you some of the scriptures: Romans one seven, First Corinthians one three, Second Corinthians one two, and on and on. Seventeen times in the New Testament, it says grace and peace, grace and peace. Grace and peace, grace and peace. What does that mean? It means grace and peace go together like uh, peas and carrots, like rice and beans, like, uh, like uh, Mike and Carrie, like, <laughs> like Greg and Janice, right? And so, but here, here's what else it means. Whenever you've, whenever you've left peace, you've left grace. Amen. Now that's not a condemnation. It's not something for you to be condemned about. It's just a barometer that lets you know you've stopped trusting God in that area. You've stopped, you've stopped drawing on, on, a, on God's word and you've started entering into, into your own strength. And Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he, tr he trusts in you. Um, I'm just, I just want to encourage you today, my brother and sister, and I'm going to give you a couple of verses here in a moment that, are, that I, I think are pretty radical that will show you how to rule over your enemies. But, Amen. but uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 11 says that we're to live in peace. We're to live in peace. And look, if, if each of us are commanded to live in peace, but if the enemy cannot keep us from pursuing the will of God for our lives, he's going to attempt to sabotage our grace journey by getting us out of peace. If he can get you out of peace, he can eventually move you out of grace. And man, I could, I could tell you a lot of stories about this, but I, I'll give you one example. Um, in, in 2009, my wife and I had pastored for 22 years the same church at this time, and we felt that the Lord had spoken to us that he had a new assignment for us. I, I felt like that there was a limit or a ceiling on my ministry where I was. And 
I, I finally got the courage to ask the Lord. I said, is this, is this ceiling or this limitation, is this from you? And, and I, he finally spoke to me. He said, he said if, you know, if I would have allowed you to be as successful as you wanted where you are, you wouldn't be open to the new assignment I had for you. And he confirmed that in several ways that he had a new assignment for me. And so I began to seek the Lord and pray about it and, and um, got, conf uh, got confirmation from people that, that I trusted, Bob Nichols, my pastor, uh, uh, Wendell Parr, and I talked to Andrew about it, and, and they all confirmed it. Yeah, but you needed to, we needed to wait on God. Well, so we, we did, and uh, finally I was part of a large African ministry. I was on the board of that ministry, and they uh, finally the president was l looking to step down um, he was in his 70s and he was wanted to ha transition the ministry and he and he came to me he called me and asked me to he asked me to come and and uh and we prayed about it and we felt like that was god we took the ministry over and he was still uh president and i became the ceo and he uh he and and we in a in seven months period of time the ministry grew from 600 partners to uh, over a thousand partners. Wow. Um, we grew from 1 million to 1.2 million dollars a year in uh, par in partnerships uh, in fin finances um, in a in a recessionary time. We have put systems in place. Things are really going well, and so I finally turned my church over to a son in the faith, and and then went over to Africa again and. In fact, I took my wife over, and we we saw some things that were that needed to be changed. And I think ultimately that's what happened: is the uh, the person that was in charge over there saw that maybe his uh, his 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 goose was cooked. <laughs> I don't know, or that he were gonna, he was going to have to make changes. But anyway, so uh, I I came back, and and seven weeks after I turned my church over this this man and this man fired me and uh and i he gave me no explanation just said it's not a good fit and i said well look at all these things that that's happened it's you know god has done all these things and and uh anyway i now i can't go back and take over my church mm. you know unless i'm like the guy <laughs> who fired me right yeah. and uh and so there was a great battle that raged in my soul because because it didn't make sense, and, and there was no, you know, there was there was a the battle against against my mind to to get off to get off into, you know, suing the ministry and doing all these. Wouldn't that be great? A pastor sues ministry, right? <laughs> and and the the greatest battle was in, in my heart was to stay out of anger and stay out of revenge and offense and 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 stay out of discouragement and. And all of that, and 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 to draw on God's peace, and I just made the decision that that, that man's decision could not, uh, or, or could not change God's plan for me. He said He had a new assignment for me, and so, um, you know, I, in fact, I I had emailed Andrew, and Andrew emailed me back. He said, "Oh, Greg," he said, "Don't worry about it." He said, "That's just, that's just a sign of an insecure." leader huh. that's jealous of someone doing a better job than them. <laughs> he said, you need to take it as a compliment. I said, compliment, man, I need a job, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and anyway, because I took the time to, to control the, uh, you know, that, what you, we're right here in Karis Bible College. That's right. Okay. And you're hearing some of, we actually have school tonight and uh and so that's some of the noises you're hearing that's our uh it's one our minute get, our get ready bell that's our one minute bell yeah so uh, uh so we, this is live bible study so <laughs> it's it's awesome so uh man i took the time to just keep to guard my heart from from getting into strife and getting into all all the things that the world does and i'm telling you guys the biggest battle in our lives is the battle to stay in peace yeah that's right. When the enemy and and it was just seven weeks after that that uh, I I had told Paul Milligan uh, Paul Milligan was Andrew's CEO for a while he's on Andrew's board and I went and was telling Paul about what happened and 
And he said, uh, well, Greg, pray for me because uh, Andrew has asked me to start a business school. And there's the bell, <laughs> praise <laughs> God, for our, for our night school. Uh, he, he said, but I, I can't tell him yes and I can't tell him no. And so I went home and told my wife and, and she said, you need to call Paul right now because you've been in business and you know the principles he teaches. You can help him mm -hmm. start that business school. I said, that's not God. And she said, you call him. And I called Paul and he said, that's God. And anyway, long story short, guys, seven weeks after I was fired from this ministry that I thought was the assignment God had for me, uh, I'm in Andrew's office and he's offering me a position at that time to help <laughs> Paul start the business school. Praise the Lord. And then with uh, to help Wendell with uh, world outreach. And, and then, and then uh, it's just my ministries has grown from there. And, and I'm, I attribute it to the fact that I didn't allow what that, what a decision another other uh, person had made to get into my heart. Amen. And I, I want to give you a cut in closing here, a couple of, a couple of scriptures that are, that are that are really powerful. Romans sixteen twenty says, "The God of peace will crush Satan under your feet." Amen. Shortly, when we maintain peace in the midst of warfare, it's a crushing death blow to satan satanic oppression or fear. Our victory never comes from our emotions, our intellect. Our victory comes by refusing to judge what our eyes see by the circumstances and what our ears hear and by trusting in the Lord and staying in a place of peace. Whatever God said, that's what's going to happen. And God said he had a new assignment for me. But I had to, the battle was, was not outside as much as it was in my heart. And your peace is your proof of victory. Uh, one, one more one more verse that I that I want to give you um, is Philippians 1:28. It says, "In in not in any way terrified by your adversaries, Amen. which to them is an evident token or of their destruction, but of you of salvation and that of God." So Paul's telling us here, if we won't allow ourselves to be terrified by our adversaries by walking in peace. That's the, a sign that they're defeated. Your peace, when the enemy's coming against you, is, is a sign, is evidence of your victory over the enemy. And it will reinforce the enemy's defeat in your, in your, in your life. Satan's arsenal consists of fear and worry and doubt and all these other things. And he's trying to, he's trying to get you out of peace, my brother and sister. Listen, the, one of the greatest weapons you have is, is the weapon of, of peace. When the enemy, I mean, you know, the enemy throws his best at you and his best is not enough and it doesn't terrify you, that, that's a sign that he's, he's the defeated foe that he really is. I just want to encourage you today. You've got that peace on the inside of you. You can walk in peace. And no matter what circumstances are going on, or going on around you, um, I determine to draw on that peace and, and stay in peace and just smile and just say, no, in Jesus' name, I'm holding on to what God has spoken to me. And you watch and see how that will cause you to rule over your enemies. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And Amen. When, like you said, when you walk in that peace, it really does give, uh, you open yourself up to walk in the blessings of God. You do. And, and it's not about the circumstances, right? And you know, you look at that, the situation that Pastor Greg was talking about where he didn't. He wasn't able to step into that position because of those circumstances. Yeah. You know, you look. Uh, God had something better. Where, yeah. where you came back here, you're Amen. impacting th I mean, millions of people's Praise lives God. with the capacity of billions. Yeah. And then now you're over, now Pastor Greg actually oversees our army, which has over 1,100 pastors yeah. now, I believe. Yeah. Which is uh, and that's of churches as well. Yeah. So that's just a tremendous aspect of influence. And so if you allow God. Uh, the the authority in the situations that you're in, you rest in His peace. God does amazing things. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. That's powerful, really Mike. And, and the enemy knows that, and he's trying to get us out of peace. If he can get us out of peace, he can rob That's right. us from our potential. Because yeah, you look at sickness lies outside right. of peace, right. destruction lies right. outside of peace. But if you stay in God's peace, there's nothing the enemy can do. Doctors will tell you. I, there was a doctor, uh, an elder in my church who was a doctor. 
he'll tell you that it's people that it's mm. it's stress and anxiety yeah. that that impacts people physically. That's right. And, and it's people that don't maintain that peace in their hearts. Amen. Yeah. Well, we, we have some great awesome. questions. We're going to go ahead and you're going to jump in. Awesome. So Wakuna on YouTube asked this question, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name. So um, how do you balance being sick and tired of something, wanting a change, and having peace? What, um, what if the unrest sometimes is the push we need uh, to get out of the place that we shouldn't be in? Wakuna, that's a, it's a great question. Um, but listen, if, if God's initiating something in your life, it, that's the push that we need. But he's not going to move you out of peace to accomplish that. But yeah, there are times you've got to stand your ground, man. You've got to tell the enemy, no, you've got to stand on the word. It's written. You know, uh, you, you move over devil and, and all that. But the bottom line is, 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 okay, from the time that you pray and the time that you take your authority, Okay, and sometimes in the time that you, you receive the manifestation, what are you going to do in the meantime? Well, you've got to maintain peace mm -hmm. where you don't let, you don't let the, the thing that you prayed for and, and the uh, lack of manifestation of it to cause you to get out of peace or get into worry or fretting or anxiety. That, that, that's never, look, worry and anxiety and, and is never from the Lord. And so, yeah, you take, you take your authority. Uh, and take and, and stand your ground and let the enemy know. But then, but then, listen, when, when you stand there in peace, he doesn't know what to do with you. Amen. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So Jane asked this question. I'm finding it difficult to sense God's peace and presence at all at, all at the moment. Uh, I'm not aware of any unconfessed sin or any unforgiveness. Any advice, please? Jane, uh, you know, we've all gone through those times where it just seems, you know, our, where our emotions aren't, uh, you know, connecting with what's what we've felt that where we don't feel the presence of God and all that. And that's where, you know, we you've got to make a determination. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. And God's presence is in me, whether I feel it or not, whether I have goosebumps or not, mm -hmm. and whether or whether I'm you know, just uh, feeling the anointing or not. And in those cases, you need to press in. Yeah. And you need to draw closer to the Lord. I, want, I encourage you to worship Him, maybe put on some worship CDs. Just just be intentional about your relationship with God. That You know, the enemy's just trying to mess with your head. That's right. Because your spirit's, he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. Your Amen. spirit is connected with God. And so you, you just press in and let the enemy know you know, you're not you're not allowing your feelings to to regulate uh, whether or not you're close to God or not. You just you just you just continue to stand on, on in faith on the Word and and that and that that peace and His presence in a tangible way will return. Praise Amen. God. That's good. So Kay asked this question: Does God ever send difficult times to teach us how to walk in His peace? Uh, no, <laughs> He might lead us into a challenging place, like he led Jesus into the wilderness, right? He might lead us in a, into a challenging pro place to prove that, that Jesus in you has authority over that. But he's not, he doesn't tempt us and he doesn't cause those problems. He doesn't cause, he doesn't teach us something through uh, adversity and all of those things, but he might lead you into a place where he wants his presence and his love and his word uh, to manifest and he's going to use you to do that and he's just trusting you as his daughter Amen. to go in in there with with his love and with a with a positive confession and you know there are people Mike that uh, that are have been called to a certain place and they agree that it's a hard place yeah. and so you know to to uh, Jane's point you know I just don't agree that it's a hard place God's Amen. leading me in there, and it might be difficult, but but when I come in, God, uh, His God's presence comes in. That's right. So Jane, when you're when you when you walk in into that situation, God, you're bringing God into that That's into that good. situation. That's really good. You yeah. know, Andrew often says that uh, if David would have killed killed a midget, 
he would have been persecuted. <laughs> you know, the fact of the matter is, is he killed the giant. That's true. And the, and the fruit of that was a nation that he was going to lead. <laughs> That's true. So. Well, he, he would have gotten persecuted today for killing giants. That's right? probably true. <laughs> uh, so Ruthie on chat asked this question, perfect love casts out all fear. How do we, we remain in his perfect love? Well, Ruthie, you've always got great questions. Um, you know, the, uh, understanding that you're uh, who you are in Christ and who he is in you and knowing that you're loved at all times, you're his uh, son or his daughter, uh, that, that keeps me in, in his, in his love. I just, yeah. I just refuse like, like, uh, Paul said in Romans eight, that I'm persuaded. I'm, I've, I'm persuaded, man. You know, I'm 70 years old now and I know I don't look 70, but anyway, but you're 40. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, at one time in my life, <laughs> when I was 40, my daughter told me when I turned 40, daddy, she said, you're not over the hill. You're on top of the, on top of the hill, <laughs> you're not over the hill, but you know, where was I anyway? <laughs> Listen, I'm persuaded. Amen. I've, I've, you know, I've seen the Lord come through in, in impossible situations. And so I'm just, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor principalities or powers or anything is going to separate me from the love of God. I'm just, you know, I'm just convinced because I've got a relationship with God through his word. I know that he loves me. And even if I don't know what to do in a situation, I know that God does and he's going to give me wisdom. And that, that brings me in peace. It's like, man, I don't know what to do with this problem. Well, God, Man, this is just an opportunity for you to show yourself Amen. strong, man. Amen. That's and, good. and I just have joy and peace in about right. it. Amen. Right. So Jan asked this question. If God's peace equals God's presence, does that mean that when I am afraid that God is not with me? No, absolutely not. When we're afraid, though, we're, we're focusing more on something that the enemy is doing right. rather than getting our focus on, on the Lord. Mary said, my soul uh, does magnify the Lord. Amen. Your soul is a magnifier. And so whatever your soul, mag good. whatever your soul magnifies, you're going to get more of. Okay. So if you're magnifying what the enemy's doing and you're, you're, you know, it's like Lot, his righteous soul was vexed from day to day because, because of all the things he was seeing and hearing. And so you've got to, you've got to sometimes turn the news off and turn the reports off and get your focus on the Lord and make it to make a decision that I'm, I'm exalting this report, the report of the Lord above every other report. And then fear will go, you know, perfect love cast out fear. You get, you get in the presence of God and let him love on you and show you that he, he's, he's bigger than that, that giant that's facing you. That's right. And just get your eyes off of the problems <clears throat> and stop focusing on that. Mag, your soul is a magnifier. Mag the, magnify the Lord and, uh, and you'll see that he'll turn your situation around. Amen. 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 So Tim asked this question, is it possible to have peace and still worry about something? Man, that's kind of hard to do, Tim. I mean, I don't know how you worry and have peace. It's like yeah. he said, be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, but the every, in everything by prayer and supplication, make your, uh, with Thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God right. comes in. Jesus said, uh, in Matthew six, when you enter your closet, shut your door. And That's what do you need to shut your door? The first thing I do in prayer is I get my cares over on God. Everything that I'm concerned about if that I'm that I'm if I am worried about I God I'm getting this the cares of this over on you and then I'm focusing on I'm focusing on you and too many times uh, we what we're doing is we go into prayer and and we come out more worried than we go when we go in because we're not getting our cares over on the Lord so that's what you need to do get in and get your cares over on him and you'll what you'll do you'll exchange worry for peace amen yeah we have time for one more question, and this is a little bit off topic, but okay. still something you mentioned. So Sharon B. on YouTube asked this question. She said, what is the third great awakening? Sharon, this is, you know, in, uh, uh, in, in, um, in history, in, uh, in the history of America, we've had a, there was a first great awakening um, and then a second great awakening where, where there was uh, a major move of God where cities were shaken with the presence of God, bars shut down, and and it was like 
it was like God's presence and salvation and healing and 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 just His presence would overtake cities and 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 our and our nation and and so uh, God has spoken to uh, Andrew about this third great awakening and 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 I, I believe it's going to supplant everything that's going on in the world, all the negative, because God's presence and His power and His healing and His love and salvation is go is going to shake cities. And 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 nations and and man, we're gonna we're gonna see things uh, that that even greater measure, greater works than than uh, than we saw in the Book of Acts. Yeah. So uh, I be I believe this is this is we're in the middle of that, and and the more of us that get into the Word, the more of us that believe that we're gonna we're gonna see a great transformation. In, in our and that's what happens. There's renewal. There's transformation. People from turn from darkness to light. That's right. It's it's just it's powerful. You know the difference between a great awakening and a revival is the fact that the great awakening actually impacts society. It's not, yeah. A revival is within the church. The awakening means, as Pastor Greg yeah. was mentioning, it goes outside. It shuts down bars. People's lives are transformed and actually establishes different a different culture within a nation. Yeah. And that's that's the word that Andrew has been given, where we are in the midst of a third great awakening and, and I'm excited to see what the Lord's going to do. I am too. That's why it's more important than ever that we, no matter what the circumstances we see around us that we're always walking in God's peace. Amen. So, Amen. Well, thank you, Pastor Greg, so much thank for sharing Mark. with us this evening. Appreciate it. Uh, I know that you are all blessed. I know I was blessed as well. I'd like to remind you that you can visit us at any time at awmi.net as well as please feel free to give us, give us a call. Reach out to our prayer ministers who are standing by even right now at 719-635- 1111. And one, one last thing to remind you about that once again, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock um, Mountain Time, we have we have our next live Bible study. And I believe Carrie Pickett is actually teaching. And I she's an, a phenomenal teacher. Trust me, she's amazing. So I encourage you to <laughs> I would endorse in. her. <laughs> I, absolutely. <laughs> As my I, I approve of that yeah, message. Amen. So, But we uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We speak a blessing over you for the rest of your night or the rest of your day, wherever you might be in the world. And we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV. 